Toad is probably one of the oldest mutant villains that existed and is definitely one of the most underrated ones. Created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, the first iteration of Toad appeared back in 1964 in the X-Men issue 4. His human name is Mortimer Toynbee, and the character has made many appearances throughout various media platforms like video games, animated series, and even live-action movies. Through Toad, we also see some very interesting and long-winded character development arcs, although they may not have been explored to their full depth, he has been a faithful servant to Magneto almost since the beginning and a menace to the X-Men for almost as long. However, much as his toad-like powers may stand out, Mortimer's intelligence is actually just as deadly as his mutant abilities. The speed at which he can hack systems is ridiculous to say the least, and the fact that he can be extremely stealthy if he wants just makes him an even deadlier opponent. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. How a Traumatic Childhood Developed a Disturbing Supervillain Mortimer was a boy born in a town called York in England. Considering he was born with green skin and his other visibly mutated parts, his parents abandoned him as soon as they could. He was put up in an orphanage where he was tormented daily by the other kids due to his appearance. Growing up being perpetually bullied in the orphanage, he became a shy child and was thought to have learning disabilities. Having only treated with disdain and disrespect as a child, he decided to take his life into his own hands. He dropped out of school in order to fend for himself. His his years at the orphanage and the harrowing fact that his own parents detested him so much that they abandoned him made him develop an inferiority complex so whenever anyone took even the slightest interest in him or even treated him a bit normally, he would follow them like a faithful dog. This is probably why we see in the comics that he behaves like a doting servant to Magneto, his master in the original Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Here he felt properly accepted for who he was and hence the long-term servitude to Magneto. Toad would behave differently with Magneto. Magneto as compared to the other members of the Brotherhood. His aim was always to please him while making the others look bad. Mortimer was convinced that Magneto cared for him deeply. However, this belief was built on nothing but Toad's insecurity for Magneto only saw him as another expendable pawn in his quest to rule the world and wiping out all normal humans. He briefly had a thing for the Scarlet Witch. However, this got him into arguments and fickle fights with her and her brother Quicksilver. Later on though, he would lose his interest in her when he sees her pregnant and for for some reason, his sight repulses him to no end. So, Toad along with other members of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants would often go head-to-head -head with their rivals, the X-Men. Once Toad and Magneto got trapped by the alien stranger and were made part of his menagerie, in this instance Magneto managed to plot his own escape but left Mortimer behind. Later, when the stranger caught Magneto again, Toad's attitude towards his former master had already changed. Even though they managed to escape together this time, Toad was skeptical about his relationship with Magneto. After after this, Mortimer helped Magneto against the X-Men one more time, but this time, he realized that Magneto really couldn't care less about his safety or well-being. This was seemingly the last straw for him, because after that, Toad revolted against Magneto and escaped with Wanda and Pietro. He then got captured again, this time by the Sentinels. Though he was freed by the X-Men, Mortimer got caught yet again, this time along with the Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. Next up, we see Mortimer using his brains to achieve some pretty crazy feats. After some time, he began studying and analyzing the stranger's technology. Technically, Mortimer never received any proper education of any sort, so the fact that he began to study and understand alien technology should give you an idea of how smart he actually is. It's a shame Magneto didn't use his brains for the Brotherhood's plans back then. Anyway, Toad used the technology he learned to pester and cause trouble for the Avengers. Once he even tried to kill Angel inside a castle fitted to the brim with booby traps and obstacles made by Arcade. Interestingly enough, he ended up deciding to turn the whole place into an amusement park and started taking care of it. Later on, we see Doctor Doom show up and kick Mortimer out of his castle. Mortimer started getting suicidal after this when he figured out that he was far too dependent on having others around to be able to work properly. His depression was really showing up this time, to the point where he decided to team up with Spider-Man, whom he had just met and befriended. Toad and Spider-Man, along with Spider-Kid and Frog-Man, went on to become a new superhero team called the Misfits. Even though he tried to keep himself engaged with the Misfits, Toad's depression would only worsen as time passed. He then decided to go back to being a villain. Then he would try again and again to capture and abduct the Scarlet Witch. His every attempt, however, was stopped by Quicksilver. Vision and Wanda herself, after giving up on this, 
this venture, Toad tried to play a game with Gideon. He tried to get Proteus to join a new brotherhood that he was forming. He did, in fact, succeed in forming a somewhat smaller and less threatening version of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants with the help of Pyro, Blob, and Pantasia. Mortimer even changed Carl Lycos back into his Pteranodon form called Sauron, and along with the Brotherhood he made, they fought with the X-Men. They also fought with X-Factor as well as Sleepwalker, Portal, and Darkhawk. If we actually take a look at Toad when he was first shown in the comics, he actually looks like a normal human, no green skin or warts at all. However, he was always hunched over and bent down to a half crouch. Later on, he started to mutate further and began to look far more sinister. When Toad made his own brotherhood, they would get into fights with the X-Force. It was in one of these battles that Sauron would apparently mortally wound Cannonball. However, like most superhero storylines, Cannonball got better, and the X-Force defeated the Brotherhood. Defeated once again, Toad would go on to retain his status as a menace to all of humanity. He created problems and attacked humans wherever he could find them. On one occasion, Mortimer apparently even murdered a human. Later, he met with a group of young mutants called Generation X. This was when he brought a fight to the Massachusetts Academy. This was the home to Generation X, much like the Xavier's house was the home to the X-Men. A couple of months later, he would leave his villainy behind but remain anti-human in his heart. Some of his major comic book story arcs. X-Men Forever In this arc, we see that the stranger has attacked Mortimer in San Francisco. He accuses Toad of wasting the opportunities and knowledges that he gained from the stranger to do silly things, like attack the Avengers. The stranger was bitter that Toad didn't instead use that technology to make himself better. After this interaction was done, the stranger explained that he was in fact Prosh. Prosh was actually a living alien spaceship that had been under the ownership of X-Factor at a certain time. Prosh proclaimed that they required help to be able to save the universe. In the process, Toad was recruited along with Iceman, Jean Grey, the Juggernaut, and Mystique. On the quest to save the universe, the squad was sent to different points in time in the past. One of these times included when Toad was happy alone, taking care of his amusement park castle. Another point that they were sent back to was when Toad was captured by the Avengers after being defeated by them. Some time after that, Mortimer was sent back to the time when he first joined Magneto and the Brotherhood. Magneto may have saved him in order to add numbers to the Brotherhood, but he did not treat Toad well at all. Mortimer was again forced to go through all the traumas that Magneto had caused him. Next, the ragtag bunch of mutants were sent back to a point soon after Mortimer's birth. Here, it was revealed that Amanda Mueller had been experimenting on Toad in an unknown research facility. Sometime later, we find out that the threat to the universe was actually the real stranger. In the battle that followed, Toad was fatally wounded, but Mystique would go ahead and heal him using Prosh's technology. Prosh also believed that this would perhaps unlock some hidden genetic potential that had been ruined due to all the experimentation Toad faced in his childhood. To be more specific, Mortimer realized that the only reason he looked so ugly was because of the experimentation done on him. Juggernaut's father, Kurt Marco, was the one responsible for this, and he had really messed up Mortimer's genetic structure. Prosh's device healed Toad while also giving him a better appearance over Overall, along with a very strong prehensile tongue. Bloodsport Tournament Soon after this, Mortimer was seen entering the Mad Report Bloodsport Tournament. In the first battle, Toad faced off against a villain called Eel. Here, he was seen using his long tongue to grab and simply crush his opponent's body, breaking his bones and killing him almost instantly. However, luck was not on his side for too long because his next fight would be against the Wolverine. Even though Toad managed to cause some degree of damage because of his newfound abilities, he was still no match for Logan. Even after Toad was defeated, Logan refused to take his life because he didn't want to go down the road of being a cold-hearted murderer. New X-Men Mortimer showed up for a short while on Genosha with a team including Eunice, the Untouchable, and Paralyzer. Sometime after the island was completely destroyed, apparently their objective was to rebuild a statue of Magneto that had been built as a monument to the evil mutant leader. For some reason or the other, we see Mortimer back by Magneto's side during the Planet X storyline. However, this time he wasn't as nice to Magneto, even openly questioning him on occasion. Clearly, he had learned from his past and was no longer blindly serving Magneto. It is important to note that Magneto has been presumed dead for quite some time now and this had given him a distinct infamy after his apparent martyrdom. Toad even questioned whether it was wise to reveal that Magneto was alive, considering the power he wielded through his death. Irrespective, Mortimer did try and defend his old leader but ended up getting his kneecaps shot out by Phantom X. The incapacitated Toad would then flee from the scene when Wolverine went on to kill Magneto. Later on, we find out that this wasn't in fact the real Magneto. The real Magneto was still alive 
have been kicking, but Toad took no initiative to try and join him again. Eunice and his gang had fallen into a conflict with the X-Men, who had gained a significant position in Genosha. House of M Toad even made a small appearance in the House of M. This was when the Scarlet Witch lost her sanity for some time and altered reality into a mutant-dominated world, the House of M. In this warped reality, Toad had written a best-selling novel about his days serving Magneto and was also a member of Wolverine's Red Guard. When Mortimer got his old memories back, he agreed to help the others to restore the timeline to the original reality. And this brings us to the next story arc, The 198. The 198. During the House of M, over 190% of the mutant population ended up losing their powers. In fact, only 198 people were still left with their powers intact. Mortimer Toynbee happened to be one of these 198. Once he had saved Lorelai from the anti-mutant henchmen in Mutant Town, he led her back to the Xavier Institute. This was where a refugee camp was set up for any mutant that they could still find. Here, Toad was tent mates with Fever Pitch and would quite regularly comment on his disgust for having the Sentinels keeping an eye on them. Civil War With the help of Domino, Caliban, and Shatterstar, Toad was among the group of mutants who decided to break out of the refugee camp. Clearly, their interests did not line up with the other 198. They ended up taking refuge in what was believed to be an abandoned nuclear bunker in the deserts of Nevada. Johnny D was apparently told by General Laser to wreak havoc and cause chaos among the 198 who had fled from the camp. While the X-Men were engaged fighting with the one right outside the bunker, the group of mutants figure out that Outlaw was actually being controlled by Johnny when he raised his gun and pointed it at Domino. Luckily, Domino's powers caused Outlaw's weapons to misfire and Toad immediately jumps in to incapacitate him and prevent any further damage. Soon after this, the escapees realized that this wasn't in fact a nuclear bunker, but actually a special chamber that was created to withstand blasts from very powerful and untested weaponry. Somehow, the auto-destruct sequence of the chamber was initiated and the escapees were stuck inside. However, the X-Men, along with Iron Man, Miss Marvel, and the Bishop quickly managed to find a way to rescue everyone from the bunker, and all of the 198 got away without a scratch. Dark Rain. In the events taking place during Utopia, Toad is seen joining in and getting caught up in the chaos. They are rioting against a new rule that mutants cannot mate with each other so as to stop the generation of new mutants. He actually gets badly injured in the process and is seen later being carried away by Dragoness and Trance. Hammer soldiers get in their way and slow them down significantly. However, Locke was on their side because Gambit showed up in the nick of time and saved the three from the soldiers. Regenesis. A while after the events of Schism, Mortimer was seen begging Wolverine to let him join their group of mutants, who were moving away to Westchester. At first, Logan was reluctant given Toad's history, but he gave in when Toad said that he would even be ready to be a janitor. Now, moving forward, Toad would be the janitor of Jean Grey's School of Higher Learning. Here, Toad would feel accepted and at home. This was when his skin started turning green over time. Despite everything, he still did feel a degree of anger and enmity towards a significant section of the teacher and students there. This was primarily because he had gotten such a derogatory job apparent. However, over time we see that he began having romantic interactions with Paige, a faculty member at the Institute. Later on, we would see Mortimer leave the X-Men to return to Villain. Toad would trap a time-displaced Cyclops and torture him for some time, blaming him for many of the events that took place. Later on, Toad would go on to rejoin the Brotherhood of Mutants. Earth-295 Age of Apocalypse Toad is a superb source, very skilled Shakespearean actor in the Age of Apocalypse. He belonged to Forge's Outcasts, a small band of outsiders that travels across North America assisting people and taking out Apocalypse's minor outposts. Because of Nate's extraordinary abilities, Shadow King was alerted of their presence and the Dark Lord dispatched his most trusted bounty hunters. As they are ambushed by Domino, Caliban, and Grizzly on behalf of Apocalypse, Toad duels Caliban and kills him, but is very quickly followed followed by Grizzly. This version of Toad has ghastly white skin, a clean-shaven head, and is quite a bit disfigured. 1602 Toad Earth 311 Toad works as a spy for Magneto, the leader of the Brotherhood of those who would inherit the Earth in the 1602 reality. Magneto's plan is to enlist all witch breed, also known as mutants, who can conceal their mutations from the prejudice of non-mutant people. Some have pointed out that Toad would not have been included because he is malformed and always sticks out his tongue by a yard. He still has the capacity to stick to walls. He betrays Magneto in exchange for his life when the papacy learns he is working 
working with Magneto. When Magneto's team later manages to escape, they grab Toad and take an oath to kill him if they ever see him again. Although Toad is absent from the story's finale and may have perished there, his execution is delayed because he is spotted on the ship. Ultimate Toad or Earth 1610 Toad debuts in the same manner as the canonical timeline as a member of Magneto's Brotherhood. Cyclops pretends to join the Brotherhood early on in the Ultimate X-Men tale, moving in with Toad and becoming his close buddy. They remain in contact throughout the series, and Cyclops expresses his opinion that Toad is simply committed to his false perception of Magneto and his mission rather than being evil. Cyclops and Jean Grey take over the school after Xavier is slain by Cable, although it is subsequently discovered he was only Kidnap and Toad joins the X-Men and even works as an instructor there. Cyclops welcomes him, but Jean and a few other people are uneasy and do not put on a front of liking or trusting Toad. The Morlocks are soon visited by Cyclops and Toad, who offer to take any of them back to the school they chose and inform them of its new policies. Despite having previously taken in Nightcrawler, Sunder, the head of the Morlocks, believes that there is more to the sudden influx of surface dwellers than just coincidence. He kidnaps Toad and Nightcrawler on the theory that they are spies for the Morlocks. Cyclops, Jean, Rogue, and Iceman free them soon after. As opposed to being a submissive Yes Man, Ultimate Toad has a less pitiful disposition and seems more like a brash British punk. His abilities include the prehensile tongue, wall clinging, and leaping, as described in his introduction. In his appearances, he has demonstrated he is a fighter of some ability. After the ultimatum plot arc, he is said to have passed away. Toad in an episode of Spider-Man and his amazing friends and other animated shows. X-Men Evolution Todd Tolonsky, one of the more well-known versions of Toad, is the actual name of this character. They have a lot of the same abilities, although Toad is a teenager and he's not British. He doesn't seem to know Magneto unlike the majority of the characters. He also doesn't have the clingy henchman demeanor. Rather, he looks like an average teenager, shiftless, self-interested, and scruffy. The first member of Mystique's Brotherhood is Todd, a 17-year-old student at Bayville High. He pairs up with young versions of Blob, Quicksilver, Avalanche, and subsequently Scarlet Witch. Avalanche serves as something of a field leader. He utterly fell in love with Wanda and made numerous attempts to win her over. In fact, a whole episode called The Toad, The Witch, and The Wardrobe was devoted to this. He and Nightcrawler had a rivalry going on from the very first episode. With the exception of Scarlet Witch, the Brotherhood refuses to fight when Apocalypse appears, but they reluctantly join the fight out of concern for their allies to save he has Noel Fisher as his voice. Wolverine and the X-Men The MRD frequently captures this Toad who even threatens the arresting officers by saying that the Brotherhood will save him. They succeed in doing so and save their clumsy teammate. Rogue takes off a glove when she pretends to join the Brotherhood because she finds Toad's attitude and his tongue annoying. By doing this, she momentarily absorbs his powers and knocks him out cold. Domino acknowledges his inexperience and apologizes for Toad. This Toad is largely influenced by his ultimate form. His voice actor was AJ Buckley. You wearing any jewelry? <laughs> In the multiplayer action RPG video game X-Men Legends, Toad makes a cameo as a mini-boss and is voiced by Armin Shimmerman. He shares the same physical attributes as his ultimate form, but has the background and demeanor of his 616 incarnation. Like the majority of the other characters in that game, he is defeated by the X-Men when they run across him at a harp base. He was detained in their holding cell and Magneto eventually freed him. When they reached Asteroid M, Emma Frost took over Toad's consciousness to unlock the door. Toad appeared in two X-Men movies. Toad has made an appearance in a couple of X-Men movies in the past. One was in the 2000 X-Men movie, and the other was in X-Men Days of Future Past. In the first movie, Toad happened to be one of the four Brotherhood members that made appearances in the movie. The other three were Mystique, Sabretooth, and Magneto. Mortimer's role was played by the martial artist Ray Park. Here we could see Toad being able to leap around with supreme agility, super fast reflexes along with his really long tongue. He also had the ability to produce mucus in this movie and with which he almost suffocated and killed Jean Grey. In the movie, they use some artistic licensing and make him appear as a master combatant who uses a pole while fighting. In fact, he is so good at combat that he even beats Cyclops and Jean when they're fighting atop the Statue of Liberty. In his ending scene, we see Storm blowing him off one of the supporting platforms, which he tries to grab with his tongue. However, Storm just electrocutes him, and as he falls into the sea below, he is presumed dead. Next, we see a teenage version of Toad in the 2014 prequel X-Men Day 
Days of Future Past. His first appearance is in 1973, where he is seen in a camp along with other mutants who have been enlisted to fight in the Vietnam War. While in this camp, he and his mutant buddies were almost sent off on an airship, apparently to be subjects for the experimentation under Bolivar Trask. Luckily for them, Mystique gets in the way and saves them. Around the end of the movie, we see Toad working in a fast food joint, frying and flipping burgers. He looks up at the TV and nods in agreement as he watches Magneto give his speech about how mutants are superior to humans from the White House. This was a very subtle but nice touch as it foreshadows Toad joining the Brotherhood of Mutants. Some of Toad's incredible superpowers. As obvious as it is in his name, Mortimer Toad Toynbee possessed almost all of the abilities and traits of a Toad. This included superhuman jumping and bounding from place to place, but was not just limited to that. Back in his first comic appearance, this was the only power that we saw, and it's quite possible that at that time, that was the only power he had. Due to this ability, Toad usually always moves around by jumping rather than walking. It is possible that it has just become second nature to him, and perhaps walking normally would even feel weird. For him. It was the X-Men movie that portrayed a far more skilled version of Toad and had an effect on the comics that were released since. Previously, Toad used to be quite a miserable combatant. However, after the revamp after the movie release, Toad had incorporated his strengths into a new and unique fighting style of his own. In this style, he would use the combination of his agility and extremely strong legs to attack his opponent, which is quite the step up from his previous random attacks that pretty much always missed. It's important to note that Toad's strength lies primarily in his tongue and legs. Not only is his tongue extremely strong, it even got upgraded using alien technology to be able to reach an astounding 25 feet. This enormous length allows him to whip out his tongue and grab hold of anyone much like a python would. His tongue has enough strength to be able to crush bones in just a few seconds. And as a side note, but very much in character, he does use his tongue like a normal toad would to catch insects from the air around him. Oh, and let's not forget that at the end of his crazy long, crazy strong tongue is a mind control pheromone secreting gland. This pheromone starts working as soon as it comes into contact with someone's skin. Toad also has this sticky substance that he can spit at his enemies that instantly wraps them and dries up. This is a quick way of immobilizing someone unless they manage to break out, of course. A little similar to Spider-Man, Toad uses secretions from his hands and feet that allow him to attach to any surface, hence giving him the ability to climb walls. Unlike Spider-Man, Toad's secretions can also paralyze the entire body of a victim. There are are a few drawbacks to all of his secreting powers, mainly that this causes a chemical imbalance in his body that makes him behave just outright weird sometimes. Given his secretions, Toad rarely bathes, which makes him stink really bad. The fact that he looks like a Toad doesn't help his case either. As Mortimer has mutated more and more, he has developed a few new abilities. These new powers include the ability to control amphibians as well as the crazy lung capacity and diaphragmatic strength, allowing him to blast air with enough force to knock someone down from many feet away. However, these powers were recently reduced and some were removed entirely. A recent comic book story arc blamed him for Scarlet Witch's death. Recently, in an issue of X-Men The Trials of Magneto, the Scarlet Witch is apparently killed. Toad seems to have had a rather superficially significant role in this. So, Toad isn't actually seen in the series for a long while and suddenly, when a trial commences on the murder of the Scarlet Witch, Toad is brought forth. He immediately confesses to the crime and further evidence was brought out showing that a special metal called Uru was used to accomplish the task and was found in Toad's home. Toad knew that he would be exiled and in his final moments, cried out that he did this for Magneto. Wanda had turned her back on the Brotherhood and so Toad decided to take action for them. However, we later do learn that Toad had absolutely nothing to do with the matter whatsoever. He was simply used as a pawn. What actually happened was that Magneto needed everyone to think Wanda was dead for the sake of a mass resurrection spell. This murder was planned by the Scarlet Witch and Magneto in order to revive mutants. Me! Here kitty! Here kitty kitty kitty! Knock it off! Conclusion All in all, it's safe to say that Toad is quite the eccentric character. There are parts of him that are actually relatable and human even. However, his personality goes to show what can happen if someone is pushed too far. As a villain, he's the type that pretty much always ends up with a short end of the stick and is usually taken for granted. This does not take away from any of his powers and abilities, nor does it diminish his presence in the comics either. Thanks again for watching and we hope you enjoyed. If you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone!